Um, yeah, so hi, hello. Uh, my name is Jan Marjanovic. I'm an FPGA developer at Microsoft Technology Lab at DAISY. Um, so today I want to talk about the testing in Chisel, uh, and especially focus on the cases where uh, a module under test has uh, several interfaces or ports. Um, and uh, so this is um, the team which um, often came up when I was experimenting with Chisel. So this is when I decided to take the reusable parts and move them to a library. Um, first, I'm going to introduce ourselves, what we do, um, and also modularity is very important for us, and present how we test right now in VHDL. Um, then I'm going to do a quick overview of available testers in Chisel, and later present a BSM tester. So this is a new library built on top of the poke tester, uh, which allows you to test uh, more complex modules. Um, to illustrate how one can use this uh, library, I'm going to present an example, uh, dig down into the details uh, of the implementation. There is one issue which I want to show and maybe discuss uh, right now and, uh, uh, and draw a conclusion at the end. Um, so um, DAISY designs, builds, and operates particle accelerators in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, with the know-how which we have, we also collaborate with industrial partners. So this is why it's very important for us that we um, use the industrial practices and that, uh, for example, if we design an IP, that it has a standard interface so that we don't invent the uh, interfaces for the IP ourselves or that this is uh, easily transferable to potential industrial partners. Um, so a Chisel community is tightly connected to a RISC-V community. Uh, so that this team of designing uh, CPUs came off and up. Um, we are, on the other hand, using FPGAs for various tasks. Uh, so um, like the most common topics are the data acquisition, uh, fast feedbacks. Uh, these are large machines, so we want to synchronize so that the entire machine agrees on the time. Uh, we use FPGAs to do this precise synchronization. Um, we often have to interface with other uh, sensors, uh, 2D detectors, cameras, um, and uh, one, one aspect is also machine protection system where the high reliability and determinism of the execution in FPJ is very important. Um, to to um, a kind of address this uh, wide variety of applications, we use modular approach both in hardware and firmware. So we start with this, um, we start with this uh, platform here called MicroDCA. Um, so this is where uh, you uh, have different cards and, and so you can get the hardware which you need to do a task. Uh, came down um, to the cards like this. Uh, and in uh, these cards, usually we have a, a project composed of modules. So this is a, where the modules get connected together. And as an example of one module, uh, it's uh, this, this IP core, Gvision IP core. We have a couple of interfaces to communicate with other modules. And uh, yeah, this is like a single um, entity or single instance of what uh, came for the like a lower level of modularity. Um, to test, uh, there are several frameworks or methodologies available for in the uh, system variable lock or uh, VHDL. Uh, so um, UVM is popular in system variable lock and uh, UVVM, so universal verification VHDL verification methodology and OSVVM are popular in the VHDL uh, world. So we use UV, UVVM. So uh, in this um, system, uh, the test bench looks something like this. So we have our, our module under test uh, connected to several bus functional models, or uh, here they are called uh, VHDL verification components. So these are modules which know how to talk one uh, specific bus. And on the back side, they expose an API. Uh, to the uh, to the test bench so that the uh, procedure, main procedure can uh, can uh, schedule the transactions and get the responses back. Um, what's what's currently available in Chisel? So uh, this is just a quick overview. I guess this is going to be discussed tomorrow in more detail. Uh, there is this peak poke tester, which is kind of a fundamental tester. So it allows you to peak and poke uh, the values on the individual ports. You can uh, use expect to generate a self-checking test bench so that you uh, check actually the values uh, which are coming out. Um, 
the difference between a, a peak flow tester and, for example, a VHDL tester, a VHDL approach is that here the time is actually controlled by the test test bench, so the step is used to advance the time. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically it runs on a negative clock cat. So this is this is one important point. We'll come back to this later. There are a couple of other tests which are really convenient if you have like a smaller module so that you can test a pipeline or like a uh, combinatorial logic. Um, and yeah, there's also this new uh, new library being developed, which is um, which has some additional features for the uh, for the threading, and uh, there's a uh, yeah some more features there. Um, uh, so here we see that basically, uh, like at this level, we don't have anything similar to what we currently have in VHDL. So um, yeah, there's something to be done here. Uh, so this is the library. It's called BFM Tester. So it assumes that the module has several interfaces, several ports, uh, and each of these ports is going to be handled by one bus functional model. So this is a uh, um, uh, class or an object which, can, which knows how to talk to this interface. Um, and on the back side, this provides a high-level API so that the um, main test routine can um, control uh, these uh, this, uh, bus functional models. So for example, this would be the NQM data for an AX stream, and then the bus functional model will uh, move this data out, or uh, for example, to do a read on AXI4 Lite. Um, so the tester finds all the instances of, of uh, bus functional models by, uh, by using a reflection. So it uh, finds all the uh, classes which extend the BFM trace uh, and calls then update uh, function each, uh, on each uh, clock cycle. Um, this also means that the bus functional models need to implement a state machine where they drive uh, uh, if the bus um, interface is complicated so that they go to different states when they uh, yeah, drive the bus. Um, there are a couple of uh, BFMs already provided in the library. Um, I guess uh, this can be extended in the future to have more relevant uh, uh, yeah, uh, bus functional models. Um, if uh, there is an easy way to, to write our own bus functional model, so just uh, extend the BFM trace and uh, implement the update function. Um, so and it's built on top of the peak poke tester. So all the functions from the peak poke tester uh, tester are still there. Um, yeah, let's go to an example. So here we have a small uh, module. So it's, uh, the logic is not important for our case. It just calculates the difference in the sum and uh, applies some coefficients. But it's kind of um, yeah. Um, shows how a real module can be tested. Um, we have a couple of interfaces. So we have two uh, AXI stream slave ports and two AXI stream master ports, and we have AXI4 light uh, slave ports. So to read uh, and uh, to access the control and status registers. Um, so the module looks like this. So the, um, nothing special. The uh, interfaces are bundles provided by uh, bus functional models. Uh, or it, together with bus functional models because the bus functional models need to know how to talk on these interfaces. Um, and yeah, so it starts like this, we import the library, uh, we uh, extend the bus functional te uh, BSM tester, uh, and then we start creating the bus functional model. So here we can use the factory so to, to, um, uh, to simplify the instantiation of this module. Um, and here it can be seen that we connect the uh, BFMs to each individual bundle on the interface. Uh, they can also um, get a name so that when the um, tester runs and the output uh, is printed out, uh, you can see uh, uh, which one it's, uh, is actually doing stuff. Um, and then, uh, so we came to the main routine, so main procedure. So uh, first we schedule a read on the address zero. Uh, we uh, add some, oh, sorry. Uh, we add some um, uh, data on the master interface and we wait for some time so that the test uh, runs through. Uh, we could also just uh, check uh, periodically on, a, on a, um, how many data, how many samples are there on the slave. Um, and then we, at the end, we, we can check what the model has done and use the expect to uh, yeah, have this everything automated. And uh, yeah, this 
concludes this example. And uh, yeah, I would, I would uh, kind of argue this point that uh, here we have raised uh, our level of abstraction. So we don't concern ourselves anymore with uh, uh, like uh, toggling the bits and bytes on the interfaces. But now we really talk a high level API, um, which helps us uh, with the uh, yeah, readability of the test. Um, and um, a separation of the constants. Um, on on uh, what's going on behind the hood, uh, under the hood, so um, the uh, tester overrides step method. So um, each time the step gets called, so the uh, BFM tester can can insert its own uh, stuff in between. Um, so the um, uh, the uh, bus functional models can can uh, pick from the, from the I/O interface. Um, uh, when the update function is called, and they uh, but folks are being shadowed, so they and they are put put into a queue, uh, and at the end of the step, the queue gets executed uh, at the time. So this um, hides the execution order of the bus functional model, so that uh, even if the uh, BFMs are executed in different order, uh, you uh, in all cases you get the same result. Um, yeah, uh, so there's uh, yeah, a scalar reflection. It's used, uh, it's used to find all the instances which implement this trait. Um, and um, yeah, so the um, module, so the, uh, the main, uh, main uh, tester needs to also uh, pass a couple of functions uh, to, the, to the test, to the uh, BSM. So this is why it's uh, easier if the um, uh, factory is used. Um, there are a couple of, of uh, BFMs already available in the library. So uh, we have an AXI for like master, AXI for uh, stream master and slave. So these are kind of the most uh, commonly used, to, uh, at least in, in our workflow. Um, but yeah, uh, if, if you have uh, a custom interface, it's relatively easy to, to um, uh, extend this. Here we have an example of an uh, XGMII monitor. Um, at the, up, uh, at the top, we have an interface. We provide the functions which are needed by the VFM. Uh, we have a uh, list uh, or a queue where we store the data, and the update function then implements uh, checks uh, each clock cycle, uh, what's going on on the bus or the interface, and then stores this data in the list buffer. Um, yeah, there is one one point which I'll, I want to show here, and, and maybe uh, as a kind of um, Feature, feature request for the uh, peak poke tester or the new testers. Um, so there is, uh, so the um, tester gets, uh, they, they get executed on a negative clock edge, um, but all the uh, registers are clocked on the positive clock edge. Um, and there is, this means that there is a small difference between the case where uh, the input to the slave, for example, gets uh, driven by the um, positive clock uh, edge uh, driven uh, register or by a uh, uh, ma master uh, BSM. Um, so um, you see, consider this. Uh, this is an, an, a small example we have here. Um, a slave uh, drives uh, ready uh, high for one o'clock cycle, um, and uh, then it's basically um, yeah. Uh, we, we can all agree that this is the data cycle, right? So here everything is high. Um, everything, uh, so the, here is where the data gets uh, clocked in. Um, so then the, um, the slave uh, knows basically if it's going to drive one on the ready. At this point, it can assume that nothing is going to happen in the half, in the next half clock cycle, and it can already uh, capture what's being driven from the register. So um, the slave knows it's going to be uh, high for for an S next one clock cycle, nothing's going to happen here. This, it can just uh, yeah, capture the data here. Um, the problem is that basically in this case, if we drive this from the same, from the um, master bus functional model, we'll miss a data. So the data is not going to be executed before the edge or is going to be executed after. Uh, this queue uh, in the BFM tester at least helps uh, make this um, um, deterministic so that we uh, all the time miss this data, but we miss this data. Um, and um, uh, sampling here, it's 
not a solution uh, because uh, we will then miss uh, this other one. So uh, we need to be consistent on how we sample in our uh, slave. We, we are not aware or we don't know, we don't have any information if we are, uh, if the, yeah, if the interface is driven by uh, a register or by um, uh, master BFM. Uh, so this is kind of an issue right now if you have uh, this uh, combinatorial logic between the uh, master and slave. Um, system Verilog solved this issue by having, um, by evaluating the uh, right uh, hand side of the non-blocking expression um, and then putting this into a queue and when every, everything on the right hand side gets evaluated, only then updating the left hand side. Uh, and it would be nice to have like a feature like this in, also in the peak poke tester. So to have like a peak uh, a poke, a non-blocking poke, so that you uh, drive and you get the data um, driven after all the peaks. Um, coming to a conclusion, so this is a new library to test uh, chisel modules uh, by abstracting away the slow level part, so the bit uh, toggling part uh, can make this, can make this uh, the test code more readable. Um, yeah, again, having this non-blocking assignment for poke would be uh, necessary to solve, resolve this uh, couple of issues in this edge case. Um, getting to chisel uh, test or this tester two, it's possible there's a code on the on a development branch, and I would argue that this is a small step towards providing uh, features which are uh, known in other, um, in other uh, AGLs. Uh, with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'd like to thank the organizers for organizing this workshop. Thanks, John. Okay, well, again, we have a couple of minutes. Is there any questions? Don't be bashful if you have a question. I'll bring the mic over. to run on top of just the newer testers to framework as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it works yeah. with either one. Yeah, there, there were a couple of small changes, but nothing significant. It was uh, easy for one part. It was, uh, for the, um, was easier for, um, uh, for the, um, uh, to get this. Uh, you don't have to pass uh, the uh, functions uh, to the tester, any, to the BSMs anymore, because they are all uh, seen by this uh, implicit. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, more complicated to override the step, but with an, again, with an, an, uh, providing uh, an implicit in the tester itself, and then calling uh, an implicit from the other implicit. Uh, you can do it like this. So that was okay. And this is open source stuff. You can c contribute back. Um, yeah, it's on the it's on the GitHub. So 